Hi there guys and welcome back to the Tantrum Kite Surf Online Kite Surfing School. Today we're going to talk about the effects of obstacles on the wind. Okay, we're going to talk about four different things. We're going to talk about gradient wind, the Venturi effect, updraft and wind shadow. Okay, the first of these I want to talk about very simply is wind gradient. Wind gradient, rule of wind gradient simply states that the higher up you get, the stronger the wind becomes. Okay, as the wind gets lower and lower nearer the ground, the obstacles on the ground, be it trees, buildings, whatever, cause friction on the air passing over it and slow the wind down and make it a little bit more gusty. Now this effect is felt over quite a small distance. So the distance of the, of the kite in the sky, be it 20, 25 meters, whatever, the wind up there will be slightly different to what you feel on the beach. All right? So you've got to be aware of this. If you've got an, um, an, a non-meter, a wind thingy, to measure the wind speed on the beach, and you put it up and it gives you a reading of 12 knots, then depending on the gradient wind and the differences in the, the gradient wind in that particular spot, the wind at 25 meters might be I don't know, 13, 14, 15 knots. It will be a little bit stronger at the height that your kite is. Okay, so you can see quite clearly what's going on here. This is a great picture showing the effects of uplift, updraft, whatever you want to call it. Okay, the wind is basically coming in here, hitting the building, being reflected back or up or around the building. But what we're concerned with at the moment is the fact it's being reflected backwards and upwards. Okay, you can see quite clearly the effect this then has. The wind reflects back, hitting the wind coming in, forcing it up over the building. You get a lot of turbulent wind in here, which again in increases this effect of the wind being pushed up and over the building. Now, the reason this is so dangerous, imagine your kite surfing here and you boost a jump. You go up and you keep going. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Okay, and you can see this effect very clearly in a lot of the videos you see of people snow kiting and things like this in the mountains. Yeah, when they boost a jump and they just go and go and go. So be very careful of this effect. So basically, if you kite surfing in front of buildings, cliffs, anything like this, try and get well away from them before you do anything. Okay, the distance, the safe distance, minimum safe distance, is calculated by the height of the object times three in front of the, the obstacle. Wind shadow. Wind shadow is the, the effect created behind an obstacle when the wind hits it. So again, taking this diagram here, the wind is coming in from the right hand side, it hits the building right here. And what you get behind the building in this area is an area called the wind shadow. So imagine if you were stood at the base of the building down here, right tucked in against the building, you would probably feel absolutely zero wind, even if it was blowing a 50 knot gale. Because behind the building you're obviously protected from the wind. Now as we said earlier, the wind here has been forced over the building, it's also being forced around the side of the building, and as it comes around the building it fills into this area behind the building and rather than being clean wind it's what's called turbulent air which is the air is falling and circling in little cyclones and anti-cyclones and here the wind will be really really gusty and really horrible especially if you were going to be kite surfing in that area there. Now a wind shadow is cast up to seven times the height of the object so it takes up to seven times the height of this building here behind it for the wind to sort itself out and become clean again. So if you imagine if this area was C and you were kite surfing here, the wind behind each of these buildings would be horrible. Yeah, gusty, horrible, down drafts, up drafts, drafts from all over the place. Not very nice to kite surfing. Also, the wind would be substantially less than it is at this point in front of the building. The Venturi effect. The Venturi effect occurs when the wind is squeezed between two objects. So imagine here, this is a building, this black block here is a building, and this black block here is a building as well. And the wind is obviously coming this way in the direction of the arrows. Now we've already seen, as the wind hits the building, it's reflected back and around the building. But what also occurs is that as the wind hits the building, the wind is channeled in between the two buildings. Now as this channeling occurs, what happens is because there's a huge amount of air trying to get through a much smaller area, the air pressure at this point in the middle here increases, and that increases the speed of the wind. So think of it as a wind tunnel where the wind enters here, is squeezed and sped up through here and is shot out the back here much, much faster than what it comes in. Now this is especially pertinent to here in Tarifa, to us here in Tarifa. This is why it's so windy here. Imagine this is the north coast of Africa and this is the southernmost tip of Europe, Tarifa. 
Whichever way the wind's coming, it's squeezed between the two land masses and shot out the other side at a greatly increased rate. And that is the Venturi effect.